In today's video, I'm going to talk about spring data JPA projections. Projections allow you to return specific attributes from your spring data query methods. So uh, let's say, for example, you have a simple to-do API. And uh, I'm going to query for this list of to-dos. So I have one to-do there uh, with three fields. But what if I want to have an endpoint that um, only returns maybe the name and I don't need the ID or the completed. And I want to just return one field uh, to improve the performance of my API. And I also want uh, the SQL query to be optimized to select for only one field. Well, projections uh, allow you to do that easily. So first, I am going to show you how to do this with interface projection. Uh, so here, I have an interface projection with a native query. Uh, and I have this query annotation where I have my SQL query. And I say this is a native query. And then you can see that it returns a list of to-do views uh, and not the entity. So uh, this view is just an interface with a get name function. So this name should match up with the to do name field, right? Uh, so now if I go into the service, um, you can see that uh, I have this function here that returns uh, a list of to do views. So this get all to do views function returns this. And um, if I go to the controller, uh, I have this controller method here uh, where I return a list of to-do views. So it's just test interface projection. So now if I go back to the terminal and run, uh, test interface projection, then I would get back one to do with uh, one field. And if I go back here and take a look at the console, you'll see that I'm selecting only one field from to do's. Uh, now in contrast, if I select the to do's from my original method, and I go back and look at here, you can see that it's selecting every field on here. And just in case you're wondering how I'm able to get the SQL to show up in my console, uh, if you add these two lines to your application properties, then uh, you should be able to enable that feature. The second type of projection I want to show is class-based projection. So here you see I have a function to find by name and it's returning a list of to do name DTO. Uh, so if I click into that, you'll see that I have this um, DTO class here, and I'm using Lombok uh, with data and all args constructor annotation. And there's one field for the name. Now, if I go back to the service, uh, and let's see. So here, get names by name. And you can see I have a to-do repository, find by name. And uh, it's calling this class-based projection here. And uh, if I go to the controller, we have this method here to test class-based projection. And uh, it takes a request parameter of name, and then it calls our service method. Um, so if I go back to the terminal and I do HTTP localhost 8000 to do's test class based projection. And uh, we want the query string. So to do this with HTTP, we do a nine equals equals foo. And then we get our one to do with one field. And if we go back to here, uh, we can see that the query 
I was in fact uh, selecting one field. Now the last type of projection that I want to show is a class-based projection with a JPQL expression. Uh, so here is an important note. The class-based projection does not work with native query. So that was a gotcha. Uh, for a while, I couldn't figure out why my class-based projection was not working when I tried this with a native query. Uh, but if you read the um, Spring documentation, it will tell you very clearly that it is not supported with native queries. Um, so if I'm, if I'm doing a class-based projection here where I'm returning a DTO and I want to have a query, then you have to use uh, this syntax here. So here I'm saying select new, and then I'm passing in the path to the to-do name DTO, and, um, and then the field that I want here. And then from uh, the to-do entity, uh, and then, yeah, so get all names. Uh, and then in the service, so here's the service. Uh, we're calling that and we're turning a list of DTOs and then back out to the controller, test class based projection with JPQL query. Now, if I go to um, terminal and I type HTTP 8000 to do's test class based projection with JPQL query. And I get one my one to do. And then if I go back to IntelliJ, scroll down, uh, then you can see I'm selecting one uh, field from the to do's table. So there is one more type of projection to go over, and that is a dynamic projection. So here you can see that I have a variable type uh, as my return type. And let's go here and then let's go to the service. So now I have two uh, methods in my service. Uh, one returns a to-do name DTO, a list of to-do name DTOs. And then the other one returns a list of to-do ID DTOs. So uh, the name DTO has a field of name, but the to do ID DTO has one field for the ID. So um, as you can see, I'm passing in the class, right? This is the to do name DTO class. And then for this one, I'm passing in the uh, ID class. Uh, let me refactor this and say find all IDs by name. <clears throat> all right, uh, and let's go to have a look at the controller. So I have these two uh, get mappings here, test dynamic projection, which will get me a list of just the names, and then test dynamic projection two, which will get me just the list of the IDs. So let's go to the terminal and do an HTTP thousand to use test dyna dynamic projections uh, and then name equals, equals foo and you can see that I got one to do uh, with just the name okay and I go back and I do a get test dynamic projection 2, you can see I got a list with just the ID. And then if I go back to IntelliJ, you can see that it selected only the ID field. That concludes today's video on Spring Data JPA projections. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. And for more resources on full stack development, check out my website at fullstackbook.com. Thanks for watching.